Having already seen how to customize layouts, the order for sorting the information list, as well as searches and filters, we will now learn how to customize behavior through events. Some predefined actions exist for each screen. For example, when we're on the list, we have in the menu a button to insert a new element on the list. In the detail screen, and depending on whether we are in edit or view mode, we will have specific and predefined actions. For example, when we are in view, we can see on the menu the update and delete actions that will take us to the same screen, but in edit mode. In Genexus, actions are known as events. Let's start with the list. In the action bar are the actions that will be added to the device menu. This is a button. If we press it, it'll open the detail screen in edit mode for the user to enter a new real estate property. Where was this programmed? In the events section. Here we see the associated event and the code that will be executed every time that this event is produced. An invocation will be made to the work with for smart devices of the property transaction, level property, and detail in insert mode without passing parameters, which means that the edit layout will open up. In this edit screen, corresponding to the general section, we can also see two buttons on the menu. Once the data of the new property has been loaded, we'll want to save it, save, or otherwise cancel and go back to the previous screen. We can find those two buttons on the action bar. What do we expect to find as code for the save event? We are on the device. We have all the information that the user has entered for this new real estate property. When we save, we should send it to the server in our case, in the cloud, to request that it execute the logic of the property transaction with that data, creating a new record in the database for that real estate property. That is to say, we have to request that it execute the REST business component and inform us about whether the operation was successful or not, so that we may inform the user of the device. But all this logic, which depends on the device's platform, is encapsulated in an API provided by Genexus, SD Actions. When we invoke the save method, what we expect will be done. When the user presses cancel, we want to return to the screen from where we started. For example, if we want to do an insert, we'll go back to the list. And if we want to do an update from the view of the property, We'll return to that view. This is what the cancel method of the API implements. Parallel to this, in the view we have the update and delete buttons. We can see these buttons in the action bar of the corresponding layout. Upon selecting update, the expected behavior is that it'll open the edit layout to enable the user to modify the information on that property. Let's see the code of the event. The detail is invoked from the property work with. Property level. In update mode. Passing as parameter the property ID received as parameter. This will be interpreted as having to open the edit layout 
instantiating the values of the real estate property with that identifier. Lastly, when we press delete, we also want the detail to be invoked, but this time in delete mode, so that the user may decide whether to delete the property or to cancel the operation. Why does this return come up? Because from the view, by deleting the record that we were viewing from this button, we will want to delete this record in front of us. And immediately following that, we'll want to return to the one that called up this view in the first place. Here we can see that we have two consecutive commands within the event. When we need to make two invocations inside an event executed on the device, we will have to use the composite command. But this is something we'll see later. We have just seen predefined events for both the list and the detail that were programmed automatically by the pattern. But we can also define other events and place them on different locations in the layout and not only in the action bar for them to appear on the menu. And we can use various commands to program the desired behavior. There are two types of events. The system events, whose code will be executed on the server, and the user events, whose code will be executed on the device, regardless of the possibility of communications with the server through invocations to REST services. We'll see server events later on. We've seen some client events predefined, and now we'll see one of ours. We've added a transaction for scheduling visits to the real estate properties on a given date and at a given time for potential clients of whom we have stored the first names, their last names, and telephone numbers. We've applied the work with pattern so, a section has been automatically added to the property work with for showing the visits. The last name of the prospective client, the date, and the time associated to the property that's viewed. We associated images to the sections and enhanced the grid's appearance a little bit. So it'll look something like this. at runtime. If we tap on a visit, we'll see that it shows us its general information. That is to say, the detail node of the property appointment work with in view mode. The default action that will take place upon tapping on a line is configured in every grid the default will always be to open the view. In the menu, we only see the possibility of refreshing the screen, but there are no other actions defined. We want to offer the possibility of inserting a new visit for this property. From this screen. In other words, we must call this detail, but to the edit layout in order to do an insert. For this purpose, with a right click on the action bar, we choose to insert an action, which we will call Add Appointment. We edit the button's properties and shorten the caption, which will be seen at runtime. Now we program the code of the associated event. We drag the name of the work with, press dot, and what follows is the level. It sets it automatically because there is only one. So then, who do we want to call from that work with? The detail in insert mode.
It indicates that we have two options, either not send parameters or send as parameter a variable of the business component type of the property appointment transaction. In our case, we'll need to send a parameter, the property identifier, because we'll want to insert a new visit. But to this property. Therefore, we cannot use this first alternative since we want the property to be instantiated. We will have to use the second alternative. In it, we will define a variable of the business component type of property appointment, and in that variable, we only initialize the field that we want to send with a value, that is, property ID, following which The interesting thing is that when we do this, once the user has filled in the fields in the screen, when save is done, the same variable will be returned, loaded with all the values to be used later, as we will be seeing. Having done this in Genexus, with the variable already defined of the business component type of property appointment, and with its property ID property already assigned with the value of the property ID attribute received by parameter, and sent by parameter. Let's see how it turned out at runtime. From the list of properties, we select one and see its scheduled visits. Now in the menu, we have the Add button, which we could have associated an image to. And when we press it, we see that it was initialized with the ID of that property. Now let's enter the values. And when we hit save, it returns and refreshes the screen where we can see the visit we just entered. If we tap on it, it'll show us all its data. This image appears. And when we tap on it, it takes us to the device's contact list so that we can call that number. How did it know? because the domain of the attribute is phone. Once again, we can see that with semantic domains, the application is integrated with functionalities from the device in a way transparent to us. In addition to this transparent integration, we also have other explicit ways that take place through the various APIs provided by Genexus. For instance, if, after entering the visit in the database, we wanted the prospect's data, to remain recorded on the contact list of the device, we would have to add here a call to the contact list by passing the three pieces of data we have, first name, last name, and telephone number of the contact. But how do we interact with that functionality in the device, which depends on the platform? The answer is through an API provided by Genexus address book. When we open this external object, we see that it provides us with methods to add, delete, or view a contact. What we do then is call the address book in the device through this API and using the addContact method, where we must pass all parameters required, all of them, and in the same order. The first name goes first. Where do we get it from? It was loaded on the business component. So it then requests the last name.
and then the email. And because we don't have one, we leave an empty value. Then the telephone number. And after this would come the name of the company, which we don't have either. So we go on to an empty value, followed by the photograph and ending with a message. When saving, it requests the composite command, since we are doing more than one invocation. We'll see this soon. Now let's execute. After we save the visit, it takes us to the address book so we can add the contact with the data we've just sent it. We have all these APIs, which are added to the KB when using the generator for smart devices. Some of them require the use of structured data, so the corresponding SDTs are automatically created for handling them. For example, here we have this geolocation API. which for some of the methods offered needs these two SDTs. This API allows interacting with the device's GPS to obtain, for example, its location at a given time through the getMyLocation method. Among other things, it also allows recording the way made with the device in a given time period with the star tracking method and to stop the registry with end tracking as well as to trigger proximity alerts, among other things. Given their extended use, it'll be possible to use the methods of some APIs without the need to reference them to the name of the API. We already saw one case, the one of the return method, in SD Actions. The same will happen with the refresh method, which will be used to force the refreshment of screens. This will also be the case for some in the interop API to deploy a message on screen, to request confirmation from the user in order to continue ahead, and also for setting a dynamic link. This API implements the possibility of sending messages, scanning barcodes, playing video or audio files, sending emails, messages, and so on. So far, we've programmed code for the user event we added. Now what other things can we do within an event executed in the client? 